Now you'll notice one thing about the blues scale, and that is that there's a couple of patterns that work very well as far as hammer-ons, and they, they roll off your hand very easily. Here's the seven to the octave, up to the minor third there, the four to the five, to the seven. Now you want to always constantly keep those in your mind when, when you're playing them, because they should sound very smooth, just... that kind of a sound, and they'll roll off your hand very easily. So uh, we'll do exercise five. Now you'll notice that there I used four to the five, double shot with my thumb. Exercise six. Now there I'm just playing basically the same line again. Again, rolling off with my left hand. Exercise seven. Now here I'm going to incorporate the seven to the root to the minor third up high, which is that sound. And when you're going to play the dead note on the G string, that's what you want to hear, and then a hammer on there. Example eight. Example nine. Now I'd like to play a couple of variations, and uh, I'm going to play along with the drum machine and just play around with the notes in the blues scale. Now what I did there was just to expand on some basic ideas and yet keep the general feel happening. 
uh, staying very much within the boundaries of the blues scale and also the passing tones that we talked about. So I'd like to do this again for you, this time as a bass solo in the context of a tune. And the solo section is in G, so it'll be a lot like the example you just heard. And listen closely to the rhythmical interaction between the bass and the drums, because that's what I'm going to try and emphasize here. Okay, moving on to example 10, um, we have a four bar bass line, again in the key of G. So what I'm going to do is play the line as written and then change the phrasing a little bit to create some variations for you. <laughs> 